For me, the thing that made this death very tragic was the indifference of the community. So you could count on one hand the Muslim leadership that was present at his burial. 1969, how many years now? 50 yeah. some odd years yeah. later? Yeah. And the so penny still hasn't dropped. When we look back, we found very few examples, very few role models, very few ideas which could help us the life and death of Imam Abdullah Harun was a kind of oasis right. in a desert and so it provided tremendous inspiration. When I got engaged I met him for Imam Harun for the first time right. and imagine he still made fun of me because I was very very thin and, and then he said oh my dice a skeleton <laughs> <laughs> you know, then I used to, to make fun. But like I said, when I came to know him, his face was like a light. And he was talking to us, but he was talking as if he wasn't there. Mm. It's as if he wasn't there. And the, the, the next week they took him. The government of the day taught us Africans are not your equal. That is the way they divided and ruled us. And some of us really, really believed it. But the black man is not your equal. And the Indian man is not your equal. We were being termed as Malays. And we were a better type of people than these other groups. And Arun came along and says, but this is not right, man. We should not believe in this. There's no Indians and no Malays in Islam. You are Muslims. The Muslims themselves inherited this characteristic of adopting racialistic attitudes towards the other, particularly towards the African. As far as the understanding of theology is concerned, the Imam was wrong. A lot of intellectual cowardice was involved because it needed people with guts to stand up. There was a conspiracy with regards to rather being safe and never being locked up and also being looked after. MJC and all that blah, 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 blah. Come, we are going to demand that the Imam be released. We will stand there. We will not leave. We will fast until we die. But that is what they should have done. They did nothing. Sweet, fanny, nothing. Imam's funeral was certainly a very historic occasion. There were waves of people then. There were miles of people behind. This whole road up to Observatory Cemetery was packed with people. His death created the conditions for transformation. Never before had the Cape Muslims witnessed such a courageous outpouring of solidarity and objection against the apartheid state. On the day that he was buried, there were huge earth tremors in Cape Town. I often wonder if this concretized his martyrdom or his myth. And all of a sudden we had a shake. I just heard my father and his friends and everyone speaking about how this was God's verdict on the killing of Imam Harun. One should be just accept what had happened. You must understand, Khalid, that there are a lot of myths and untruths that are grown up around your grandfather. I think that he will be very he will be easily sort of extremely disappointed. I'm sure he's extremely in the Akhira by what's happening in the Cape of the God. When the Muslims finally stood up with a voice against the apartheid government, it was 1981. The Qibla organization was founded along very militant lines, damning apartheid 
and resurrecting Harun as a hero. After so many years of silence, was this use of his image because they were inspired by the Imam? Or was it a case of misuse in order to further the Qibla cause? Growing up with no real identity of my own, and after the bombings in London, I questioned the Islamic identity that I had come to know. It's this search that leads me to find out about my grandfather. After all, he was known by many and stood for a definite cause. Surely, he must have known who he was. For his dream, he died. What was he? Patriot or terrorist? 